Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 1st September 2022. So actually today, your Hindu newspaper had not been published. So especially to motivate you, I came up with some important articles. I have collected these articles from some important sources like Indian Express, Times of India, Down to Earth, especially to motivate you and I want to continue this series of current affairs even in the holidays. So especially Hindu will be not published just four days in a year. That is uh, the next day of uh, Ganesh Chaturthi and the next day of Diwali and next day of uh, Dasara and also next day of Sankranti. Only yearly, so four days this Hindu newspaper will not be published. So in these days, I plan to come up with some newspaper articles from other sources such that it will be helpful to connect it with you and you will be connected with this Rathod's IS Academy okay such that we will have a long journey so now let us try to see the first quote so quote here is a winner is a dreamer who never gives up so especially this quote is very important in this UPSC journey as you all know that this UPSC journey is a very very long journey it may take like two years to six years it may take from one attempt to five or six or last attempt so here in this context so dreaming is not only important but along with the dreams you have to never give up so you have to faith in you so you have to build confidence in you okay that will helps you to achieve your goal of clearing this UPSC so now let us try to say first topic it is regarding India and Sri Lanka relations so here this article appeared in yesterday's Hindu but I missed because of time constraint so now I got time to take the this article so this article says that the many ways of helping Sri Lanka so if you see the map of Sri Lanka so this is India and here we can see Sri Lanka will be present so Sri Lanka it is a very very near right so one homework I want to give you students so let me know in which organization both India and Sri Lanka they were members so in which organizations both India and Sri Lanka they were members please let me know in the comment box and actually this article says that yes Sri Lanka is in crisis now so one important reason here is because of Chinese entry into the Sri Lanka because of this Hamman Tota port development that led to debt trap of the Sri Lanka and even political instability in Sri Lanka and we can see there is a Tamilians and as well as a Sri Lankans sorry Sinhalese issue okay that is a civil war in Sri Lanka it is also one important reason and recently what happened so recently it also went to economic crisis because of this COVID-19 pandemic and even Sri Lanka approached IMF to get some help and not only that because of this climate change also there is decreasing of agriculture productivity in Sri Lanka so these are some important major reasons for the crisis of present Sri Lanka so this article is important from our international relations and which comes in a GS paper too and this topic is exclusively important from your mains not from your prelims so now let us try to understand this topic in detail so why it is in news so India assisted with nearly dollar 4 billion 4 billion dollar to Sri Lanka so India provided some help to Sri Lanka that is about 4 billion dollars so how can India help this Sri Lanka especially in three ways India can help Sri Lanka so first one here is India can provide some liberal loans to Sri Lanka with a low interest rate and sharing some technical expertise or knowledge with Sri Lanka and the third one here is helping country to upgrade skills in different areas of economic activity so as you all know that economic activity is very very low in Sri Lanka now it is one of the important and prime reason for this economic crisis in Sri Lanka so here in this context whenever India which is providing some liberal loans to Sri Lanka then Sri Lanka will be having some money such that it will be going for some investment development etc and this one here is whenever we are sharing our knowledge some technical expertise so that will be also leads to skill upgradation and whenever we are going for upgrading of skills so that will be helpful for revival of economic activity so in these three areas yes India can help Sri Lanka so now let us try to see some engagement areas so where we can have a good engagement so first one here is as you all know India is doing good in agriculture and allied sectors so India can help Sri Lanka to develop dairy sector 
so why especially dairy so if you are having agriculture land for example if you take you will be having like a for example two to four acres of land so in this two to four acres of land you are going for a sowing of paddy for example so after once you get your harvest yes you will be having some straw so if you are not having any allied sector for example animal husbandry then what happen this straw will be get wasted and you will be going for stubble burning so to avoid this stubble burning and to get some additional income for a farmer yes government is also focusing on this allied sector for example dairy for example cattle for example uh, poultry sector etc and if you are having a cattle yes it will be very useful right so here sri lanka imports considerable quantity of milk powder from india so india india it is mainly exporting milk powder to sri lanka annually so it will be like dollar 315 million so whenever india which is helping this uh, sri lanka in this dairy sector so it will be helpful for the livelihood of the farmers and even it will be helpful for decreasing of their for exchange expenditure on this dairy sector or dairy products so for example milk powder and second important thing here is in poultry sector also india can help so india can share knowledge on the productivity of wheat which is largely used as a primary ingredient in this domestic poultry field so it is talking about feed so if you want to grow any animal yes we need to provide that food that is called as a feed so in this feed especially in the poultry sector so they will be adding some nutrients for example they will be using maize you they will be using wheat and they will be like in the in the types of kernels okay and they will be given in this poultry fields so whenever this wheat and as well as maize is added so it will be very rich in nutrition and that will be helpful for the faster growth of for this poultry chicken okay so in this poultry sector also yes india have a scope to help this sri lanka and as well here is in energy projects so provincial approvals for adani groups wind power project of over dollar 500 million in northern province so here in this energy sector or energy projects also india can help this sri lanka so apart from this even in this micro small and medium enterprises so programs like digital msme ramp that is raising and accelerating msme program that will provide leads to this msme sector okay so in this msme sector also we can have some engagement and this one here is in higher education so indian universities they can consider setting up of satellite campus that is the main campus will be there in india and we will be having some small branches or satellite uh, campuses that can be set up in this sri lanka such that we can provide good quality education in this sri lanka and this one is training employees of the public sector a collaborative project can be conceived for training okay and uh, that is in the second and as well as third rank employees of this public sector so we can go for training of this uh, public sector employees such that that will be helpful for skill development and further that will leads to the growth of economy and if you're talking about especially school education so we can expand our smart classrooms and modern computer labs to cover all those institutions teaching children in this sri lanka okay and especially in this sri lanka we have sinhalese community we have tamilians so these tamilians are minority in sri lanka especially in which schools you are going for teaching for these tamilians yes there we can see some under privileged sections right so those tamilians are under privileged sections of society so in those schools yes we can provide computer labs we can extend establishing of smart classes etc and so near in in the in this uh, sector of this culture so india can also arrange a greater number of buddhist monks to visit religious places in india okay and now let me give you one mains question so mains question is long sustained image of india as a leader of oppressed and marginalized nations and disappeared on the account of its new found role in the emerging global order elaborate so try to write answer for this question and this question has already appeared in your upsc 2019 so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding sarpanch patis or sarpanch proxies so if you are from rural areas yes you might have gone through this concept very clearly and with a very near proximity so if you are from any rural areas yes we will be having elections for the panchayats we will be electing sarpanch so after once if a woman who is elected as a sarpanch then his her then his uh, then her husband will come into picture and he will be looking after everything and even for the meetings also he will be attending but that so into sarpanch women sarpanch she will be not taking any care 
and what happens to this is called as Sarpanch Pati or Sarpanch Proxy. It is one of the important challenges that we are facing in our Indian society. So now let us try to understand this topic. So this topic is important from our polity point of view, which consider your GS paper too. So now let us try to see this topic in detail. So if you see context, it mainly says that male kin of women, that is a spouse of that woman, can't attend the meetings of Panchayat as Punjab government order. So here this Punjab government says that only Sarpanches if they are women, so those women need to attend the meetings but not the husbands of that women. That is Panchayat Patis or Sarpanch Patis or Sarpanch Proxies. So Sarpanch Pati where men relatives of elected women run the office in the place of them. So in this concept of the Sarpanch Patis, so what happened if any Sarpanch who is woman elected, so instead of that woman, her husband, he will be taking the charge and he will be running the offices in place of that so and so woman. So if you are talking about what are the issues with this Panchayat Pati or Sarpanch Pati. So most of the women Sarpanches, they do not attend the meetings. First of all, they will be not attending the meetings which are, take place, which are taking place at the district level, block level and village level. So they will be not attending, only their husbands will be attending the meetings. And so here is, so because of this, whenever there is discrimination that is seen, that is even women when she elected as, and whenever this woman even she elected as serpent, so her husband will be enjoying that post indirectly. Okay. So what happened? So you might have come across this concept of president and prime minister, right? So here we can say like de facto, de facto head here is prime minister. Okay, so in the same way, even though Sarpanch who became woman, but the power is present with her husband. This is concept called as a Panchayat Patis. So study says that more than 80 percentage of women Sarpanches, they are proxy Sarpanches today. Okay, they are not really doing work on the ground. Their husbands are doing their work. So Punjab had implemented 50 percentage of reservation for women in Panchayat institutions. So actually we came up with this local self-governing bodies through the 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. So this 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act which came up with this panchayats and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act which came up with this municipalities as you all know. So in this panchayats especially there was 33% 33 of reservation that is one third of seats they are reserved for this woman. But here in this Punjab so they came up with 50 percentage of reservation for women. So because of this here, this this uh, distribution is mainly taken by this Punjab government. So we're talking about what are the benefits of women reservation in panchayats. So as per 2010 study which said that, so here villages with female leaders, they experienced increased female participation. So whenever any woman, she is coming out of her home and whenever she is entering into the politics and whenever she is take care of, take care of our village, yes, here there is a chance of getting more women into the society and they will be leads to the female participation and that will lead to increasing of responsiveness of this uh, female policy concerns. Okay, so this is about this topic in detail. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding partial UAA turns in to signs to squeeze more rainfall from clouds so this article which is mainly talking about cloud seeding so here you have to understand why this UAE want to come up with this cloud seeding concept so as you all know that this UAE which is present in a arid area so there is no proper rainfall so here because of that this area people they used to depend upon the oceanic water and this oceanic water they will be desalinated okay so they will go through the process called as desalination and they will be using that water for their for their drinking purposes etc but what is the problem now because of increasing of population because of climate change and because of increasing of tourism in this uae yes there is increased demand for water so if they want to go for desalination it is a very heavy and as well as uh, it is also a very costly process for them so because of this, they came up with this concept called as cloud seeding. Actually, which countries they use this cloud seeding? So first of all, US came up with this cloud seeding in year 1946. And later on, China also used this concept of uh, cloud seeding. And later on, even Saudi Arabia, Iran, they are also using this cloud seeding. And now UAE wants to come up with this cloud seeding. 
So now let us try to understand this topic in detail and now let us try to see the context why it is in news. So countries in Middle East and North Africa they are raising to develop chemicals to get raindrops out of cloud. So cloud seeding means nothing but so they will be going to near these clouds and they will be spraying some chemicals okay so because of that that will lead to speeding up of condensation process and finally that will lead to the precipitation or rainfall. So this is as simple as this so don't complicate the things so try to remember them in a simple way. So cloud seeding it is a type of uh, weather modification and in this cloud seeding we are mainly having aim to increase the amount and as much type of uh, precipitation that flows, that mainly falls from these clouds okay. So here they will be using chemical called as silver iodide and even sometimes we can also use potassium iodide and also dry ice liquid propane okay etc so these are some important things that can be used so you will be getting question like so which of the following are used to get cloud seeding so make uh, to go for cloud seeding for example we have silver iodide potassium iodide and as well as uh, we have dry ice and as well as liquid propane so these are the materials that we can use for this cloud seeding so if you see some important uh, details yes we have to see the what are the benefits and what are the dangers of this cloud seeding so we're talking about benefits yes it will be improving the clouds ability to produce rain and we will be getting the good rainfall because of this cloud seeding and even it cleans atmosphere by introducing the tiny ice nuclei into certain types of sub freezing clouds and even these nuclei that will be having a capability to come up with the snowflakes also okay so these will be the benefits and if you're talking about the dangers so here we are using this silver iodide so here Studies mainly say that whenever we are using the silver iodide, it will be not causing any damage to our environment. But sometimes, so this silver iodide will be toxic to this aquatic life. Okay, so this is about this topic. And what are the infographics that you can see here? So this is talking about the process of this cloud seeding. So if we're talking about this so cloud seeding, how it works. So first of all, they will be taking pilots. Okay, sorry, they will be using the planes. So in this planes, the pilots will be running these planes, right? So they will, so these wings, they will be fixed with uh, canisters and these canisters, they will be filled with this uh, silver iodide and this silver iodide will be released by the planes. So after that, this silver iodide particles, they will be reaching the targeted cloud and after that reaching the targeted cloud, so this will be speeding up of this condensation process. Okay, and even it will be leads to the formation of ice crystals. So the ice crystals they descend and they will be melting in the form of rain that will cause precipitation. So this is about this article in detail. And now let us try to say next topic. So this topic which is talking about Geneva Convention. So title says MORTH that is nothing but Ministry of Road Transport and Highways standardizes procedure for issuing international driving permit. So they are talking about international driving permit. So what is this international driving permit? For example, so if you have this international driving permit in your hand, so if you are present in one country and if you are moving on to another country, so you can drive, right? So without this international driving permit, you can't go for driving in other countries. So for this, yes, we have to remember about this Geneva Convention. So I want to give you one interesting point regarding the Geneva Convention at the last of this topic discussion, okay? So if you're talking about why it is in use, in adherence to this Convention of International Road Traffic of 1949, it is commonly called as the Geneva Convention. So Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, they have notified standardizing process of issuance of this international driving permit. Okay, so here we are coming up with a standardizing procedure or process for giving of this international driving permit. So if you are talking about India, yes, India is signatory of this convention that is Geneva Convention. And if you are talking about some facts regarding this Geneva Convention, so it is an international treaty which signed in the year 1949 and it is focusing on development and safety of international road traffic. And if you are talking about this uh, Geneva Convention, so it is also talks about prison, prisoners of war, it talks about protect, protection of civilians during war time and as well as uh, it will be also talking about limiting of this barbitry of war. So 
it is not only talking about this road traffic but it is talking about four important things so here you have to know about geneva convention 1 geneva convention 2 geneva convention 3 and geneva convention 4 so this geneva convention 4 that will be seen in news commonly it is talking about protection of civilians in the time of war during the time of war yes we need to protect this civilians and geneva convention 3 talks about uh, treatment of prisoners of war and Geneva Convention 2 talks about improving the condition of this uh, ship record sailors armored force at seas. And Geneva Convention 1 talks about improving conditions of sick wounded members of armored forces. Okay. So these are some other things which are mainly talked about this Geneva Convention. And this might be a potential prelims question. So please be prepared and please concentrate. And now let us try to see next topic. So this topic which is talking about United Nations General Assembly. Okay, UNGA praises India's role in United Nations. Okay, UNGA praises India's role in United Nations. So, this article is important from your international relations point of view, which comes under your GS paper too. So, now let us try to understand why this UNGA which praises India's role. So, what is the role of India which played in this United Nations that get appreciation? So, if you see why it is in use. So, President of United Nations General Assembly praised India for contribution to global body. Okay. For United Nations, India contributed. So, for that contributions, even GA President, he praised India. So, now let us try to see what are those contributions made by India. So, first one here is source of pride. So, he described India as a source of pride, not only South Asia, but for all peace loving democracies yes india is a source of pride and this one here is india which mainly fight against injustice for example india was first country to raise apartheid issue at united nations so it is one of the contribution of india and this one here is peacekeeping so more than 2 lakh troops or 249 united nations peacekeeping missions in india it was the first country to deploy all women contingent to United Nations mission in Liberia. So here if you are talking about UN, United Nations peacekeeping force. So India's contribution is very high and it is having about 2 lakh troops. And even women they were employed. And if you are talking about UNCTAD, India is instrumental to this UNCTAD. And if you are talking about terrorism, India drafted comprehensive convention on international terrorism. So apart from that, India also coming up with reform of United Nations Security Council. Yes, what happened in this United Nations Security Council? So there were 15 members. So 5 are permanent and remaining 10 are temporary members. And this permanent members, there are 5 countries, that is P5 countries. And in this 10 members, so they will be elected for a tenure of 2 years. So here in this, in this United Nations, yes, we are talking about elaboration. Or we can say like expansion of this United Nations Security Council. So for that we came up with this concept called as G4. So G4 means countries like India, Japan and as well as uh, one more country is Germany. Next one is Brazil. So these are four countries which are mainly came together and they formed this G4 group. And they are demanding for the expansion of this United Nations Security Council. So, to oppose it to this G4 group, so we have also having this coffee club. Let me know which are the countries part of this coffee club and what are the aims of this club, coffee club against this G4. And next important point here is pharmacy of the world. So, you know that what an important role which played by India during this COVID-19 pandemic. Especially India supplied vaccines, India supplies of essential medicines to other countries. So India not only recovered from the disease but itself even assisted for the several other countries. And India, uh, India is called as a pharmacy of the world now. So now let us try to see the today's students practice question. The first one here is which of the following correct arrangement of islands from north to south. I am asking from north to south in Indian Ocean. So now let us try to see some islands of Indian Ocean. So here we have Sri Lanka. Here we have Sri Lanka, here we have Sicilies, Maldives, Assumption Island, Dio Garcia, Agaliga Islands, Mauritius and Madagascar and you have to arrange them from north to south. So the first one will be obviously Sri Lanka, okay, pick Sri Lanka and you can eliminate the second state, second option. 
so we we have we uh, after the sri lanka we have maldives select this maldives you can eliminate this uh, option d and after this uh, maldives yes we have assumption islands we have assumption islands and last one is agalega island so correct option is a so in this way you can practice elimination technique and second question here is with reference to special marriage act so this special marriage act we discussed in our yesterday's lecture so with reference to this special marriage act consider the following statements so it follows solemnization of marriages without going through any religious or customs or rituals yes this is one advantage and the primary purpose of this act was to address inter religious marriages or inter faith marriages yes so correct option will be c both 1 and 2 so this is about prelims questions of today so today i didn't came up with vocabulary because i am not discussing about any editorial here the correct so here i want to make a small announcement we in rathods is we came up with this prelims test series and this prelims test series is very very useful because you are providing 30 test which includes both gs and as well as uh, your csat so here we are also giving you questions at least 25 questions every test will contain some current affairs from last one and a half year so that this will be exclusively important to clear your prelims and if you want to know whether you are in a correct direction or not yes you have to take this type of mock test and you can analyze where you are weak in which or your strength so that you can work on that that will be helpful for increasing your chance of clearing this upsc prelims and the cost here is just 3000 rupees and the validity will be one year and how many times you want to give the test you can give the test that many times Okay, and one more thing here is we also came up with this mains answer writing practice course of one year. So in this course, we are going to provide you weekly targets, and we are going to give you week uh, weekly schedule for next one year. That is fifty two week schedule with the micro listing of topics, and based on that syllabus daily one question will be given to you, and you have to write answer for that question. You have to send that answer to our mail ID. so that there will be detailed evaluation and we will be giving you detailed feedback to your answers and apart from that feedback there will be also model answer will be given so even though if you don't know how to write the answer so if you see this model answer you will be getting some idea regarding how to address that so and so question and we are also conducting live classes on every sunday for this so and so course okay so all these benefits that you are going to get within this 8200 rupees for one year so it is a very very less investment that you are doing here and is also affordable and as well as accessible to all so try to join this course so this will be exclusively beneficial and if you have any doubts regarding this course so please call me on this number 8074765513 and if you want to get the other courses like foundation course and other single modules like only geography history ethics economy so you can take those single modules So, if you want to watch the demo videos, you can visit our website rathodsisacademy.com, and there you can watch the three demo videos without paying a single penny. Okay, so this is about this current affairs today. I hope I motivated at least five to ten students who are who are seriously preparing for this UBSC. So, by this I am concluding. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So, if you are not been subscribed to Rathods Is Academy, so try to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. and one more thing i can say here is so if you want to get the pdf of this class you can visit our website there in the free downloads you can get this pdf apart from this if you really like this video hit the like button and share this video to your friends so by this i'm concluding thank you so much and have a nice day